Protein, unlike carbohydrates and fat, is not primarily used for energy. Our body is structural, and it's primarily made up of protein. There's protein in almost all parts of our body. That means that our protein requirements are probably related to our body mass. However, our protein requirements do change based on the state our body is in. For example, when we're leaner and there's less body fat for our body to use for energy, we might use more protein. Likewise, when our body carbohydrate levels are lower, our glycogen levels, which is the storage form of carbohydrate in animal systems, when those are lower from dieting, we'll also use more protein for energy. And these both happen from dieting. As you eat less fat and as you eat less carbohydrate and you eat less total calories, body fat levels will diminish, which is the goal. Likewise, carbohydrate levels will diminish and won't be as well replenished after training. So you're more likely to use protein for energy. So theoretically, one way to offset this and prevent lean body mass losses is to eat a higher protein diet. Higher activity also increases the protein requirements. While the primary function of protein is for structure and not for energy, some energy is converted from protein. Our body converts protein in the liver to other types of uh, substrates that we can use for energy expenditure. And while it's not a major component, if you're burning a lot of calories, that small component can add up. So as activity levels increase, as you go into energy deficit, as you deplete glycogen stores, and as you deplete fat stores, you're going to need more protein to offset the potential loss of lean body mass. Additionally, we know from many studies on resistance trained athletes that higher protein intakes tend to be more optimal for resistance training adaptations. And at a certain point, this will level off. However, to a certain point, you will get an added benefit of consuming more protein to basically aid the recovery process from resistance training. So when you put those together, we can get some useful actionable ranges as a theoretical model for our resistance trained athletes who are dieting, our bodybuilders. So should we be prescribing protein based on a percentage of calories or grams per kilogram? As you probably guessed, because protein is related to our mass and is a structural component to our body, it makes a lot more sense to do it as grams per kg. So if you know the lean body mass of your athlete, a decent range is an easy two to three grams per kg. If you don't know the lean body mass, you can use 1.8 to 2.8 as a useful surrogate that's probably appropriate for the body fat levels that most competitors start at at the beginning of prep. Now, high protein diets have been studied a lot more in recent years, but there's many years where they were not. And there were misunderstandings in early science about the safety of high protein diets. There's been concerns about bone mineral density, concerns about kidney health, and concerns about long-term health for cardiovascular disease uh, and other concerns that have now today been proven to be relatively false. We know that high protein diets are safe for even long periods as long as a year at much higher levels than I'm suggesting here. However, in certain clinical populations, you certainly want to avoid high protein diets. If someone only has one kidney, or if they have specific clinical issues that hopefully you'll get from your intake form, if you're doing it right, then you need to lean on your support network, contact your clinical nutritionist or registered dietitian, and make sure that an appropriate protein intake guideline is used. Finally, it's very important to point out that protein cannot correct for poor training, and it's not a substitution for a crash diet. Far and above macronutrient content is energy balance, and training is probably the most potent stimulus we have to maintain muscle mass. So that means that if we were to put protein too high, and drop our carbohydrates and fat too low, that would actually make it harder to do uh, proper resistance training to maintain lean body mass. Likewise, if you're losing uh, body weight at a very fast pace, it's almost invariable that you're going to lose lean body mass. So put protein into context. We do want an appropriately high intake, but we don't want it so high that it throws the baby out with the bathwater. Now, we've got bodybuilders both in the off-season and during contest prep it probably makes sense to kind of split up this broad range of 1.8 to 2.8 or 2 to 3 grams per kg for if you have lean body mass as an actionable number into two different categories. Higher protein intakes are associated with greater levels of satiety. Additionally, the demands, all those aspects that might drive a higher protein requirement are more present during a diet. So simply split the guideline I've given down the middle and you can use 1.8 to 2.3 grams per kg or 2 to 2.5 grams per kg of lean body mass when you're in a state of maintenance or surplus and you can use the higher end when you're dieting. Just remember, in some cases, going into the very higher end may push carbohydrates and fats too low to a level where it may negatively affect training or affect adherence. So always keep adherence and training quality at the top of your mind when you prescribe a certain protein intake.